So on we go to the next video, which is me explaining to you how to use the PC DJ if you're going to be mixing audio tracks. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to mix because there's different styles for different DJs and it's a case of whatever is working for you. So I'm not going to teach you how to mix. The only thing I'm going to do in this video is to go through and actually show you how you can mix on PC DJ, show you some of the little tricks. So obviously you want to have your dance tracks and it's best to do this sort of thing when you are um, not actually working live, like do this as a bit of preparation. <clears throat> so if you've watched the previous video, you'll be able to see that obviously I've got my colours and I'm going to load up that one into that side and then a little cheat here. I'm going to load up that one because it's already at 130 BPM, so it saves me having to set it. You'll see there, I just used the sync button. So let me just reset the BPM on that one. So it's, it's at 127, but I want that at 130. And on this side, I've got something that is at 130. So if I press the sync button on that side, which you can also do by doing the shift and space, it'll take it up to the 130. Now, if I wanted this orange side to be at 127, I'd press the sync button on this side, but I don't. I want it at 130 because that's what I use as my BPM uh, for when I'm mixing. So I've got them matched. Now, you'll also see up here that I've got the cue points set. Now, the reason I have these set is because if I reset this song on the left <coughs> back to zero, you can actually see the, <coughs> pardon me, the, the zero of the track is actually just before the beat. So, if I've got this side playing, and I match it up, and I'm thinking, right, one, two, three, four, go. It's just out. So the best way to have it in is to have your... Um, your cue point set, sorry, my, my brain keeps going blank today, I really don't know why. Now the way to set your cue point, you can see that mine's just gone off here. So what you want to do is you want to go to number one, and then just scroll across ever so slightly until you get to about the middle of the beat. Like so. And then just press Q. And it'll change your cue point, and your cue point now will always load up at that point. Now there are different ways, you can have up to 8 cue points per song, which obviously if you're going to be doing like an acapella on this side, and then you can have your beat on that side, this is really handy, because you can set different points throughout the acapella. And then the other really good advantage to having PC DJ, is that it will store them acapella points with that song, until you delete that song off your computer. So say you didn't use that particular acapella, for, oh God, I don't know, 10 years, and then you wanted to use it one night, well, it's still got all of your old cue points set, so you don't need to worry that it will have forgotten anything because it's got a really good memory on it. The other thing which I quickly flicked past here was the um, rhythm button. It's, uh, I don't really use this, to be honest with you. I find it a little bit off-putting. The only reason because I don't actually see the point in it That's it. No, I don't like it. Now, <coughs> one thing that people who do use PC DJ will have just noticed is that when I did play both the songs at that point then, they were actually slightly off. There wasn't any beat matching. And now, the way to sort this out, so say, for example, you have this song playing, and I'm just going to skip it forward to my favourite bit in the song. I really don't know why I love that bit as much as I do, but I do. So you want to have this song, like, sort of joining in with that mix, right? So you start it off, and you can see there, these two aren't matching, nor are the beat counters here. Press the sync button again, you see they've gone into place, and it's also matching the beats a little bit better now. So when I go ahead and bring this in, 
That's absolutely perfect. Beats are matching and it sounds okay. Obviously not my particular style of songs, but hey, they work. So, let me go back to the cue points here. Now, <coughs> another thing which you can do, like I was coming to the end of that song then, you'll have seen that I went into a loop. And the only reason I do that is so as when the volume is down, you've got plenty of time to actually make sure that your beats are matching. And if you have got headphones and your external mix, you can actually listen to that with the volume up, as long as you've got the volume turned down on your mixer and just your headphone line like tuned into that line and you'll know how to use your mixer. <laughs> so that's another really cool thing, the sync feature um, that it will actually correct your beats and sort of get them back into a pattern. Now that will not work for every single song. Some songs that I've got even on here, the beats will be slightly off and that will knock this counter off as well. So it's always important to listen to your music before you bring it in so your audience can hear it. Um, the only way that you can do that on here um, with having the basic sound drive like I've got is to actually use an external mixer and have to listen in through your mixer. So yeah, great. Now on here, you've also got a, um, a small list of different effects that you can put on. So you've got your backspin, which is one I used just then, beep, grid, break, um, flanger, I don't know why it's called that, I never use it, I never call it that anyway. Flipping double is quite a good one, key changer, over loop, that one doesn't really do anything and neither does that, so <laughs> oh well. But they're kind of the main things that you can practice and play with. Obviously, make sure you've got your cue points set. Don't be afraid to use these effects here. And if you want to play around with the track while another one is playing, I'll just quickly show this before I go. So say, say I've got that one playing to the audience. And I'm sort of getting this one set up, but uh, I want to do something to it. I've got to make sure that that is lit up to play with around with that side and it won't affect that side. Vice versa, if I've got that side playing and I want to play around with this side, make sure that this one is lit and then of course it won't affect the other side. So that's really, really basic stuff but it really will help you. Now in the next video I'm going to show you how to use uh, it for video. And video DJing, if you've got the right sort of videos, can actually be done pretty much the same way. Um, like mixing-wise and mixing techniques. It's just a case of using the video processor on this actual uh, bit of software. So like I said, that's coming up in the next video. So thank you for watching this one, and just practice and enjoy.